Is this another one of those real estate agent business planning videos? No. Yes. Yes, but I guarantee it'll be worth your while. A lot of real estate agents don't like the idea of putting together an annual business plan. I get it. And maybe some of you think that business planning is a little bit too selfish, but let me tell you something, it's actually pretty selfless. Also, don't think about it in terms of business planning, but more of success planning. You are using this time to get organized and to prepare yourself and your clients for success. Why is it important to do this? Let's turn to our favorite book, The Go-Giver, and The Five Laws of Stratospheric Success. The law of compensation states, your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them. That makes sense. And that makes this whole process a lot easier. You only have to do two things, serve a lot of people and serve them well. Great, but how do you do it? This is where planning comes in. And let me be clear about one thing. Planning is great, but acting on that plan is what makes success happen. I don't wanna go into too much detail since this is a short video, but I wanna give you a few tips that you can put into your success plan to make 2017 your best year yet. You can add more analysis into this if you like, but these few things will certainly get you started. First things first, you do need to review your current year. What things worked for you this year and what things didn't? Where has your business come from? And what are your conversion rates? Yes, this might be the boring stuff, but it's important for you to have a baseline so you can stop doing the things that don't work and put more effort behind the things that do work. The next thing you wanna do is review your database. Your database is the central nervous system to your business. Unless you enjoy having unpredictable income and being an on accident realtor, this is one of the most important things that you can do so that you have the ability to take successful actions. So go through your contacts and organize them into a few categories. First, you will have your database. These are people who you know and they know you at that very basic level. Next up, create a group for all the people that have either bought or sold a home with you. Now the next level is to create a group for your sphere of influence. These are people who you communicate with on a semi-regular basis. They could be clients, they could be friends or family. Qualify them by thinking about all the people who you would be comfortable with talking to either on the phone or face-to-face -face on a monthly basis. And for the last group, you have your raving fans. Woo! Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Go, go, go! Woo! Okay, maybe they don't act like that, but these are the people who you are closest with. Whenever they think of real estate, they think of you, and they can't wait to recommend you to their friends. There are certainly more categories that you can put your contacts into. Buyers, sellers, current clients, hot lists, warm lists, all those things. And I suggest that you do do that. But for this exercise, you only need those groups we talked about. Now that you have an organized database, you're ready for the next step. Committing to a series of actions. These are the things that you should be doing to interact with your existing database and also to help you grow your database. The most important and fundamental action that you can take, and we can even call this the one point business plan, is to engage in 50 live conversations every week. This can be on the phone or in person. Emailing does not count. I can already hear some of you starting to cringe. Don't stress on this one. It's a lot easier than you think. These conversations don't necessarily have to be real estate related. The objective is to engage in a conversation where you learn something new about the person with whom you're talking to. Remember, this business is about them, not you. So you want to engage in conversations where you can listen for changes in their life where maybe you can help. These interactions also don't have to be 50 different people every week, meaning 2,500 different people per year. This could even be the same 50 people every week. You just can't count one person 50 times in a week. Make sense? The next action is to write handwritten notes, and I would shoot for 10 per week. Don't know who to write to? This is why you organized your database. Look out for birthdays or anniversaries or other important dates for people within your sphere and your broader database. You will also be learning about these people through your live conversations, so when there's something significant, write a note to say congratulations or thank you. The more you do this, the better you will get. 
The third weekly action that you should engage in is conducting real estate reviews for your clients who have bought homes through you and other people you know who own property. Conducting an annual evaluation of their real estate holdings will be incredibly valuable to them. These also don't have to be as complicated as a comparative market analysis. You just need to give them a basic sense of where the market is trending in their neighborhood so they have a good idea of where their value might be. Now that you've created a weekly action plan for yourself, you want to layer onto that a series of monthly touch points that are relatively automatic and can reach your entire database with ease. These are things like monthly newsletters, postcards, home maintenance tips, etc. Come up with some creative ideas that are a combination of art and science and a way to deliver that to your database. I will suggest a combination of email and direct mail, yes, there still is some value there, and try to plan out up to three pieces per month. If you do these things, live conversations, handwritten notes, real estate reviews, and some monthly content distribution, you will be well on your way to a successful 2017. Yes, there are a lot more things that you could throw into and maybe should throw into a success planning session. Things like calculating the number of transactions that you need to reach a certain income goal, or how many contacts you need in your database to achieve that number of transactions. But the real point of success planning is to create an action plan that you will actually follow. Remember, a great plan only works when you take action on it. So set up a series of actions that you will actually do. And the last thing that you want to do is assign yourself an accountability partner. This can be a colleague, it could be your manager, it could even be your spouse. The point is that you want somebody holding you accountable for your actions. These actions that we talked about are certainly easy to do, but they're also easy not to do, which is why it's important to have somebody helping you and encouraging you along the way. Well, I hope these few things have helped you out and will contribute to your ability to put together a great success plan for 2017. One last thing, remember, your success starts here. If you believe you can do this, you will. Have a great day.